Today then, my take on the classic little glider transformation. These have just come back into stock in this part of the world, and you'll find dozens of videos on YouTube of modifying these for various configurations. Being of an adventurous type, and I've wanted to try this little EDF fan, this 40mm Dr. Mad Thrust from Hobby King. That's what I'm going to try to graft onto the Lidl's glider today. In addition to that, I've got a suitable speed controller, 30 amp. This guide draws 25 amps. This battery is clearly not going to be of a high enough C rating to drive that. I've ordered another battery up, a, a graphene battery, which will be able to do the job. And it's only a little bit larger in each direction. I can use this then to rough out where I'm going to put the battery. My receiver of choice these days, because I love telemetry, and this is the most cost-effective receiver on the market, I think, that provides that facility, the Radiolink R8F. I've got myself a bunch of servos, two for the ailerons and one for the elevator. There's no rudder function. I have a couple of carbon rods for reinforcing things. Some people take the dihedral out of the wing tips. I'm going to leave it in. I'm sure that if necessary, I can flatten that out at a later point. And I'm only going to put the ailerons in this part of the wing here. That's my choice. We'll see how to go about installing an elevator function. Without further ado then, let's press on and see how we can prepare this model for EDF flight. First job then is to remove the canopy. This isn't glued all the way round, I don't think. You can probe with the knife and find out where the glue points are. Here, for example. Finally then, I've managed to get it off. A lot more effort than I was expecting. Some people just had to cut through little dabs of glue and the thing came right off in my case. Uh, it was definitely uh, well stuck in there. The original knife I was using couldn't go deep enough. I ended up using this to do the final cutting. At least it's free now. I can go ahead and remove this large screw, which is just used as a, as a balance weight when it's in its glider mode. We're obviously not going to need that. Apart from a little bit of cleaning up, I'm not going to do anything more with this regarding hollowing it out or anything until I've got a little bit better idea of where the components are going to go. And that's going to be pretty much dictated by the centre of gravity. I'm going to mark out where I'm going to cut the elevators now. Just checking at either end. That's 20 millimetres and 20 millimetres where I'll make the cuts here is 30 millimetres. Let's mark that line. I've gone ahead then and cut out the elevator halves and just beveled each of the edges to give it sufficient movement. The next job will be to join the two elevator halves together using a carbon rod. The control horn, this is the top. The control horn will go on one side around here. Not exactly sure where at this moment in time. Although useless for soldering, this uh, Weller solder gun comes into its own for making these little channels. Uh, just make sure you're in a well ventilated area. With the slot made, we can now, with a little bit of hot glue, pop that in place. When that's set up, I can work out where I'm going to put the control horn. Made more progress. Now then, I've fitted a servo, just cut out a, a rough hole there. Got the linkage set up as I like it. I've extended the cable and cut a slot here 
run the cable along it pops up you can't see it because I've pushed it into the hole that I've made underneath the wing and eventually out the front I've left it overly long because again I'm not entirely sure where everything's going to go the slot here serves two purposes the back end is a little bit flexy therefore I'm going to glue in this carbon rod into that slot there to stiffen those things up. Let's check the amount of throw we have on the elevator there. So there, the fully up position, that's level and fully down. That should be sufficient. Now the next job is to get on and work out where our centre of gravity is going to be, at least uh, to start off with. Several guys at my local club have converted these gliders already, one even into a, a twin engine version. I asked around and uh, couldn't get a consensus really on where the centre of gravity is. Some people preferred it much further forward, others the conventional third of the wing theory. And then our president, Tom, came up with the absurdly brilliant idea of how about just using the original model and find out where the center of gravity is when it's just as a chuck glider. Brilliant idea. As then you can hopefully see here, this is balanced in a neutral fashion, if you will. It's not nose heavy and it's not tail heavy. It's just pretty much level there. So where is there? I've made a small mark, which hopefully you can see there. And that comes in at some 55 millimeters behind the leading edge of the wing. Probably no coincidence then, it's also at the thickest point of the aerofoil section. Here's what I've done with the wing then. To stiffen it up, I've put in a carbon rod that extends as far as the uh, wing tips, if you will. And that's just made out of 6mm by 1 carbon fibre, which I've sinoed into place there. You can see the ailerons that I've cut out there. Cut holes in the wings again using my weapon of choice. I've not glued any of this into place yet, as obviously we've got to pass the wing through the body. Hooking up my servo tester then, we can see it at neutral. And full deflection one way. And the other. That should be more than enough movement. Just use the blend um, surgical tape there to affix the ailerons to the wing. I think I'll probably go back and do that with the elevators too. I can move on now and insert the wing in the fuselage and get the servos glued into place. The final work is complete now. I've installed the receiver and the connection for the battery telemetry. Have a look at the balance point. We are just there on the balance point and I'm about 55 mil, so about 5 mil back from the balance point as it was when a glider. I have the correct battery in place now. If we have a look under the hood, which is held in place by magnets, things are pretty crowded under here. Take the battery connection away. The telemetry for the receiver is normally provided by this link here. Uh, that was too bulky to fit underneath there with all the rest of the gear. What I did then was to 3D print a balance plug connector, which I've soldered the wires onto there, so it's monitoring the battery via the balance lead, which perhaps is uh, a better idea anyway than putting an extra connection in series with the battery. See the receiver right up front there, and clearly the connections to the elevator and ailerons. There's no way I'm going to be fishing that out to show you because it's all packed in there very densely. For speed controller cooling, I just have a couple of slots cut in the canopy there. We'll see how we get on with that. Pretty much ready to go. I switch my transmitter on now. Welcome to OpenTX. So say space is at a premium under here. Those magnets hold the thing hopefully sufficiently in place. 
that nothing's going to go anywhere. Looking at our controls finally then, aileron right and left, elevator down is up and vice versa, arming the throttle. throttle active. We have plenty of oomph there, it's quite scary. Things are looking good then for a maiden flight, hopefully later this week. Watch this space. Thanks for watching.